Hi, my name is Mike Long. I've been fishing for 37 years. And in that time, in my accomplishments for big bass, I've caught 63 over 15 pounds and one over 20. And I specialize in pretty much uh, research. I'm basically a scientific angler. Um, a lot of people are just fishermen and they buy baits and they read articles and they go out and try to duplicate that. I'm the guy that wants the answer to the problem. So I try to go out and do everything I can to try to figure it out. Um, I, for the last 25 years, have kept a database. And basically, uh, it started off before the computer era and Excel spreadsheets of just keeping everything I could think about, like uh, water temperatures, time of day, how many hits, if I was two for five, what kind of lures, uh, barometer, uh, seasons, moon phase. Everything you can think of is very important to keep track of and put in a database. You might not think so most of the time, or you might be lazy at the end, end of a day, but the best thing to do is take a day where you're not fishing, where you're in a, a calm environment in your house, and try to put all the things you could think of that would be important data that you'd like to research. Put it on a sheet, and every day you're done, when you come home, enter that data. And that's what I've done for quite some time and been able to build with Excel spreadsheets uh, a data dumping base where I've been able to filter and retrieve data and, and write formulas to be able to keyword search certain things so I can see similarities. Because I truly believe if you're fishing 10,000 square foot of water, you can't fish 10,000 square foot of water in a day. So if you can eliminate what you're looking for down into say 500 or 50 square foot of water, you can definitely fish that a day and be a lot more successful. So part of the key who I am as a scientific angler is trying to put myself in the key areas where I have a higher percentage to catch fish. So basically you call me like a fishing gambler, but I'm trying to do it with uh, historical data. And so far, so good, I've done a pretty good job with it. And without the historical data I kept, I'd be way behind, way, way, way behind. Um, the data has definitely shortcutted things for me. It's helped me to realize that uh, it's been a better percentage on a certain water level with a water quality, with a wind direction and a moon phase, that a higher percentage to be on these typical points where you might say you want to be on a point that's directly facing uh, the wind where my data says different to be in an area where you just want to be off to the side and at a certain time of the day you have more success. So the, the data is huge. Um, another thing that uh, we kind of touched on a little bit earlier when we were talking is um, electronics and uh, not just so much computer but things that have, have absolutely helped. And the computer has been huge for me in the scientific angler approach because the way you can keep data and retrieve it. Um, but as what we have for fishing equipment these days, uh, graphs are incredible. I mean, side scan, down scan, um, there's so many things that we have these days uh, to help us find these fish. Uh, Google Earth, where you can actually look at images of the lakes, find reefs, points, you know, um, it just goes on and on and on. But sometimes we forget the most simple thing and that's to, just at the end of your trip, just make sure you kind of jot down things because one thing, even though you have all these conveniences, all this technology and smartphones and, and video cameras in the boats, it still doesn't tell you everything. You still have, at the end of the day, put the little tiny things that you're definitely gonna forget in a day, two, a month later, you're gonna forget these things. So having a spreadsheet where it asks you all these questions, so you write it down, and you might not even know some of the answers, but you'll try to figure that out. It might, it might be so much as what the barometer reading was that day, but you can go look on the internet and figure out what the barometer was for that particular day I was fishing and then enter that data. So this day and age with what we have is incredible. I mean, the fishing rods, reels, everything is good, but they're all applications to what, what you're chasing. And this, this little green fish that we're chasing is uh, basically a creature that all he does, you hear people say, oh, he's so smart, he tricks us, blah, blah, blah. Well, not really. Uh, in the case of largemouth bass, they they eat, recover, and spawn. That's all they are. They don't decide they're going to go out to the movies or watch birds fly over, or that they just feel like sitting in the shallows because you know all the female bass are hanging out and they want to look cool. They, they're trying to survive, and we forget that sometimes because our, our world is so convenient. And um, I, I think that's the biggest problem with us as human beings, especially where we've come to now. So many conveniences that we take it for granted that if we read this magazine or watch this video that automatically you're going to be that much better. You have to read the magazine, still watch the videos, take what you can, apply it to who you are as a fisherman with your data, and then kind of mix it all together to see how that'll work for you. And uh, in, in my 37 years of doing this, I found 
that it's definitely that mixture. It's definitely a lot of, of time on the water, definitely doing your homework. It's a lot of different things to try to find what I'm looking for, and that's a quality quality bass, something that's over 10 pounds or say a teen fish. It's really, really hard to do that. So all the things that I just spoke about with, with the data and the electronics and, and even having a good network of friends or the magazines you read, it's all important, but you have to know, learn how to dissect it and pull out what you need. I think that's the biggest key to everything I've talked about is how are you going to pull out of that stuff what you need and apply it to where you're fishing and understanding the one key thing that a bass is out there, like I said, He's, he's surviving. When you're out on the water, you're the same thing, you're surviving too. As we're talking here right now in this calm environment, I feel pretty good, I'm not dehydrated, the sun's not beating down on me, I'm in a controlled environment. Well, when you're out, when you're, when you're talking like this, you can think very well, but when you're out on the water, you're, in, you're surviving too. You're a lot like that bass is. So to be able to think and not be thinking about in survival mode is a very, very important key to fishing. The guys who are highly successful, like the Skeet Reese's, the Aaron Martins, the Rick Kluns, the Kevin Van Dams, these are guys that understand when they're in the water, they've got buffs, they've got sunscreen, they've got plenty of water, they're taking care of themselves to keep their head in the game. Because if your head's not in the game, and all that data you've done, and all that stuff that you've done, it doesn't matter because you're in survival mode, and you're just instinctually doing things. You're not, all that stuff you've done is for nothing because you're, you're in survival mode. So you really need to learn how to take care of yourself when you're on the water, prep before, make sure in a boat like this, that's 22 foot ranger boat, you can have everything that you need to survive in a day. Plenty of water, uh, food, power bars, sunscreen, buffs that you can pull up over your head, hats, the right clothing, sunscreen, everything you need to survive and be in the game. Even Advil, painkillers, band-aids, everything to stay in the game. Think way ahead because even if you think you don't need it, put it in the boat. I don't know how many times I've been fishing and needed rain gear or, or wind came up and you needed something just to to break the wind to keep you in the game otherwise you're in survival mode. So hopefully what I just talked about will, will help you out because it's a huge part of the game and I think it's something that most people really overlook. So.